And we're live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bigfoot Odyssey. This is The Late Show. I'm your host, Kerry. With me, as always, my good friend, Brad Hatcher and Bailey. And, and Bailey. Uh, Bailey was uh, was on camera there for a little while. Yeah. He, he, I was chewing gum, and when I blow a bubble, he's like, <laughs> you know. Why is your tongue blowing up so big? Yeah, he, he's, he's just, he doesn't understand that yet. It kind of, it. it Let's we'll talk about dog stuff, but it, it kind of spooks him a little bit. But then he'll just sit there and you know try to get it. Yeah, oh, I'm sure it's baffling. Yes. To him. Oh yes. But hey, look, he's a good dog. I actually, uh, Brad lives in Dallas, and I actually came by Brad's house today and dropped off a few things and got to see Bailey. And uh, I thought he would recognize my voice, but uh, he's he's protective. Yeah, he, he was in timeout because uh, sometimes Bailey, it, it, if you come in the house and, and you and you don't like introduce him slowly, then he'll think it's, you know, stranger danger. Mr. But yes, Gary? Mr. Hello. Gary. But I, I tell you what, seeing you today, Kerry, I mean, you, <clears throat> giving you a hug, I mean, you're like hugging a brick shit house for my friends. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Been, uh, you know. been working out a tad yeah that's all i have to do out here yeah exercise i can tell <clears throat> be sick and uh about about on the tail end of that but we have a story to get into you know i did the albert Osman story wednesday because i didn't have anything else to do and uh <clears throat> and i was reminded of this mutual harry story which is not as long but uh but still you know it's still it's in the same vein and we're gonna read it i'm gonna read it uh tonight and we're gonna do some discussing on it and uh see what you all think we'll get we'll get questions from you guys make sure if you do have a question that you put it all in caps for us we appreciate that very much hit that thumbs up i know i see our our uh, moderators and and others you know telling you guys to hit that thumbs up so we appreciate that very much and uh like and you know don't hit this one though that's that's a bad button just stay away from that the red one that says subscribe you know if you haven't done that already, um, <clears throat> we thank you. Uh, we've got documentaries coming out. Yes. Crypto Realities Odyssey is 85% done. But now that I'm here, I'm at work and I can actually speak. And it rained every day. I was home. Every day. And not just a drizzle. It came a gully washer. I mean, water was coming into our kitchen. It was that. It was Jeez. flooding out <clears throat> so and we have a tin roof <clears throat> we just had a tin roof put on and when it rains it is so loud in there i mean it's it's a nice sound but if you're trying to do a voiceover or anything like there's just no way to do it so i had to i had to pick and choose my times to do editing but i got through it uh, uh, i've got a good cohesive idea of how the story is going to go which is just the story of crypto reality and a lot of their better evidence but i think you know the way i'm doing <clears throat> some of the breakdowns and providing context for some of these, the really good stuff that I think is the better stuff that they have, have ever gotten, you know, where you see motion and clear facial features and the body, you know, hair and the, and the head and, <clears throat> and sometimes green face, but most of the times it's gray or dark, dark gray. Uh, but I've got several of those that, that I'll make correlations and shows. These guys have the same brow, the same uh, same nose. You know, you can tell it's two different individuals. I've actually got one individual twice uh, in the same place within 10 feet. <clears throat> and then there's Banner. There's a couple of shots of Banner that are going to be in there that I'll break down. But uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. And then I'm going straight to work on Pam and Paul. And Mark and I are going to work on getting back over to Donnie's in about a month to do some nighttime stuff there so we can actually finish that and get that story out. But uh, if you haven't checked out the link in the description for Impossible, it's right there on top. And uh, if you, if you want to support us, it's uh, $3.29. It's the price of one of these. And uh, it, it helps us keep doing it. If you want to support us, you're getting something for it. Plus everything else that's on there. There's a ton of stuff in there. So we appreciate you guys. At least go check it out. You don't have to rent the film. Go check out the website. <clears throat> but all right. Yes. You want to get into this? 
Let's do. Let me see. Is it up? Yep, I have it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> this is uh this is as told by Peter Byrne. Uh, it was in uh, his book uh, Search for Bigfoot from 1975. You know, Peter Byrne was one of the to me, one of the godfathers uh, of Bigfoot research. You know, there were four or five of the the bigger guys, Tehenden, Peter Peter Byrne. Uh, Peter Byrne was more of a crypto zoologist than just a Bigfoot guy. Um, but but you know, back in the is, day, he was one of the few guys you could read in the seventies that had anything out. Right there were there were there was not a lot of information. Everything was kept so close to the chest. No one was really putting anything out. It's almost like they wanted to be the one to to break, you know, to break this out. And to me, it shouldn't matter. You know, if you've got, if someone we don't even know tomorrow brings out, you know, the smoking gun, the class A, the evidence that, that brings it all together, all it does is validate everything we've done. It doesn't matter who does it. So, Wouldn't that be great? But I think they were probably a little bit more ambitious uh, that it would happen sooner than later, especially after, you know, um, October of 67, you know, when Patterson Gimlin was filmed. So <clears throat> that's just, I don't know. I, I could be wrong. It's just what I think. But anyway, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of, uh, a lot of Monday morning quarterbacks out there with books out <clears throat> about, about this and i think some of them are ken gerhardt's book's pretty good i think you guys as far as information goes and and the way claims are made i'd say ken gerhardt probably has to me the best book out there uh and i bought a lot oh, of it that's, that is a good one yeah but uh Very the story good. of Lad harry uh, uh this and <laughs> i'm probably going to mispronounce some things in here so just I'm impressed you could say Mushalot. I was trying to figure out how to, how to say it. <laughs> I'm not sure that's even correct. I mean, that sounds... Mushalot, Mushalat, Muchalat. I mean... Sounds like a anyway. Canuck. Kind of <clears throat> and I'm going to call it an Indian. And someone told me one time that uh, that Indian was politically incorrect. And I was like, yeah, I don't think it is. What's wrong with Indian? Well, they're not Indians. And this all comes from the misconception that... <clears throat> that... uh. Columbus, when he got here, thought he was in India, and that's just not the case. You know, India in 1492, India was not called India; it was called Hindustan. And he had he was reporting back to Spain, and he had really poor Spanish, so he called the people he saw Una Hinda Indios, a people of God. Indios, Indian of God. What's wrong with that? Anyway, let me get off that. So I'm going to be using that term Indian. I'll, I always will. I have a good bit of Indian blood in me anyway. So. Unless you're in Cleveland, right? <laughs> okay. Then, then it's the Guardians. Right. That's God. right. They changed it to the Guardians. Anyhow, according to the Indians, <clears throat> there was once a large number of Bigfoot living on Vancouver Island, a large island, 12,408 square miles in area off the west coast of British Columbia. The Indians knew about them, feared them, and respected them, but granted that they were harmless. One of the Indians of the Nootka tribe, who lived at Nootka in 1928, claims to have been carried off by them and held captive for some time. The story this, this is from Peter Byrne. So the story told to me by Father Anthony Terhar of Mount Angel Abbey in Oregon is a curious one. Father Anthony, a much-loved missionary priest who traveled the west coast of Vancouver Island for many years, <clears throat> was living at Nootka at the time of the story, and he knew Muchalat Harry very well. We can get the coughs out. <laughs> so, yeah, this is as, as told by the priest that, uh, well, we'll get to that part of the story, but this is who actually told the story to Peter Byrne. Says Mushalat Harry was a trapper and something of a rarity among his fellow tribesmen. He was, according to Father Anthony, a tough, fearless man and excellent physique. 
In the course of his trapping, he would want to spend long weeks in the forest alone, sometimes that the average Indian did not do in those days. The Indians of the coast were apparently a rather timid people, and they seemed to regard the deep forest as the home and territory of Bigfoot. When they went into the deep inland forest for any reason, they never went alone. Mujalat Harry was different from other Indians. He went in the forest alone and feared nothing. Late one autumn, Mujalat Harry set off for the woods with his traps and camping gear. His plan was to set out a trap line and stay in the woods for several months. He headed for his favorite hunting area, the Columbia River. At the head of the, here we go, this is T-L-U-P-A-N-A. I'm guessing the T is silent, maybe it isn't, Lupana Inlet. From Nootka, he paddled his own canoe to the mouth of the uh, Kanuma. There, he cached his canoe and headed upstream on foot. Approximately 12 miles upstream, he made his base camp, and after building himself a lean-to, started to put out his trap line. One night, while wrapped in his blankets and clad only in his underwear, he was suddenly picked up by a huge male Bigfoot and carried off into the hills. He was not carried very far, probably a distance of about two or three miles at the most. Walk three miles. That's a long way. That is a long way. I mean, it's all relative, of course. I mean, for someone back then, three miles might not have been that long. But uh, yeah, just go out, walk a mile and a half down the road, and then walk a mile and a half back, see how you feel. Let me know if it's a long way or not. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. For me, it's a long way. Dang right. Three miles? Well, I mean, you know, my, yeah, I mean, it's, and that's especially, sad to say. especially through, you know, terrain. But anyway, it was two or three miles at most. When daylight came, he was able to see that he was in a sort of camp under a high rock shelf and surrounded by some 20 Bigfoot. They were of male and female and all sizes. For some time, they stood around him and stared at him. <clears throat> the males to the front of the curious group, females behind them, and young ones to the rear. Muchalat Harry was frightened at first, and his fear grew to terror when he noticed, he said, the large number of bones lying around the campsite. When he saw these, he was convinced that the big feet were, were going to eat him. Big feet is... What's written, it's what's written here. I big, know. Big feet. Um, which, I guess, it's not a validated animal, so you call it whatever you want to, I guess. <clears throat> I don't want, just kind of want to call it an animal. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. I'm going to offend anyone. I don't know, we have to say but, so many waivers <clears throat> before we do a show these days. But, I mean, you know, Osman's picked up and carried 25 miles, he thinks, for three hours. This guy's taken three miles, but they're still taken and this is just six years before Osman's uh, account but what is it that or, or was it that guns weren't as prevalent back then and these creatures were a little bit more bold about I mean they had rifles and guns but you know I mean has it changed things that much I, I think it absolutely has I think there were a lot more interactions back in the day before guns really came along than there are now. That's just what I think. That's, that's logical. I mean, what were you going to hit him with, a stick? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I got to stamp some logic on it somehow. It's probably 100% wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> the world may never know. While they looked at him and examined him, Mujalat Harry sat with his back to the rock wall and did not move. He was cold and hungry, but his thoughts were only on escape. Sometime in the late afternoon, curiosity on the part of the Big Feet seemed to slacken, and with most of the Big Feet out of camp, probably food gathering, he thought, there came the opportunity that he needed. He leapt to his feet and ran for his life, never looking back. He ran downhill toward where he guessed the river to be and, sure enough, soon came to his campsite. In what must have been blind panic, bypassed his camp and ran for 12 miles. 12 miles. 
Now that's a long way to run. To where his canoe was cast at the mouth of the Kanuma. Just ran right on by camp in his underwear. <laughs> I was, I, I was going to mention that, but Father Harry, uh, Father Anthony describes the story of Mujalat and Harry's arrival at Nootka as follows. It was possibly three in the morning. He and his brother Benedictines were asleep and the village was quiet. Suddenly, there was a series of wild cries from the water of the inlet. Lights were lit and he and others hurried down to the water's edge. There, near frozen and exhausted in his canoe, lay Muchalat Harry. He was, he was barefoot and clad only in his wet and torn underwear, and he had paddled his canoe through the winter night 45 miles from the mouth of the canoe river. This is a man. You know what I'm saying? He ran 12 miles and then paddled his canoe 45 miles. In his drawers. In his torn underwear, barefooted. In the winter, freezing. That's a man. I don't care. That's Gary Spike Sr. stuff right there. <clears throat> he is a bad blank. <laughs> Like Father Anthony and his companions carried the almost lifeless form up from the water's edge. It took three weeks to nurse Muchalat Harry back to sanity and good health. Father Anthony, who took him inside his own care, did the nursing, and, and he told me, Peter Byrne, that during the course of these three weeks, Muchalat Harry's hair turned pure white. Now, what do you think causes that? I've, I've heard of this. I actually had a friend of mine. Uh, he wasn't a friend of mine. It was the guy I went to school with. He was in a car wreck when he was 11 years old and hit the windshield and had a spot of white hair right here on his head where he'd hit the windshield. So is it – what causes that, Brad? Do you know? I think he just had this uh, – you know what scared out of him? I mean, it had to be so traumatic Oh yeah. that he wasn't even imagine. cognizant of – how far he ran, how far he paddled. It was cold. I just don't think he had to be almost in pure hysteria. Of course. I mean, I mean, I know that's be? captain obvious, but uh, it wouldn't be. And, and yeah. you can imagine that that's the reason I doubt his hair would have turned pure white. Had nothing ever happened. Uh, it had to be from this, but I mean, that's just, uh, you don't hear a lot about that and if there's some scientific name or reason for it somebody let me know in the comments uh and speaking of if you leave a comment i'm going to read every one of them i'm going to put a little love symbol on it and uh if you address address me or brad directly we'll reply back to you so just keep that in mind when you leave your comments yes all right the story of the kidnapping came out slowly at first mutualat harry would talk to no one then he told Father Anthony what had happened, and later others. When he was fully recovered to health, he, he was asked when he planned to go back to collect his belongings, the camp equipment, his pots and pans, his trap line, and above all, his rifle at the lean-to on the, on the Kanuma. In 1928, a trap line and all its pieces must have been worth a great deal to an island Indian. A rifle alone would be regarded as a highly prized possession. Definitely. But Muchalat Harry never went back to the Kanuma. Not only did he never return there, according to Father Anthony, he never left the settlement at Nootka and never went in the woods again for the rest of his life. He preferred to lose all of his valuables and probably hard, hard won possessions rather than risk another encounter with Bigfoot. I couldn't imagine being taken like that, the whole tribe around you poking at you. Still a great account, and you can find more about it in the Peter Byrne book. The Search for Bigfoot, 1975. Um, am I missing something here? What do you mean? I did. I skipped a whole lot. I don't think you did. I've been oh, following I along. I, skipped the, I did. I skipped this part. The big feet did not harm him anyway. Occasionally came forward and touched him as if feeling him. And when they discovered that his skin was loose it was in fact his woolen underwear several came forward and pulled at it gently yeah back then they had the underwear you know like you with the trap bed. door yeah the, it was all one the onesie was what they had yeah they had the trap door in the back 
button down the front. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's they were red. Yeah, that yeah, red, and some of them were white, and probably yeah, brown. I think you would want them brown. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to buy white ones back then. Anyway, I here's, never urge again. Here's Miss Kathy Zabrowski. I have heard of persons terrified turning pure white. I, I mean, I've seen it, but there was trauma. There was an impact that caused it. It wasn't just that, you know, this kid was scared and, you know, in a car wreck is only where he hit the windshield. Did his hair turn white? So <clears throat> there you go. Miss Jean long johns still have them. That's what they call them too. Long johns. You guys have any questions or you want to make a comment or anything, just uh, put, put it in caps for me and, uh, I'll see if I can't pick them out. So not not quite as long-winded as the Osman story, but I still thought it was was you know worth telling, at least, you know, this close to the Osman story. Um back to back like that. Because I told Osman Wednesday and I provided color commentary along with it. But I mean, can you imagine in today's time? getting uh, a millennial yeah just i mean getting carried i have millennial kids so i know them pretty well and you know, i don't know <clears throat> i just can't you know i mean having his rifle there i mean you know how you see the westerns and everything and they always you know sleep with their gun under their pillow or their hand on their gun or something but, you know, since he had a rifle, I mean, that's just, and I don't know, that's, that would just, I, I'm surprised, he, I'm surprised he didn't lose his hair. Well, when you, when you're in the woods by yourself for a long time, you get complacent. You may sleep with your gun for the first couple of days, but after that, you know, if nothing's going on. You know, you're fully aware, as far as you know, of everything that's around that can bother you. And I'm sure up there, you know, the Vancouver area of uh of the coast of canada are big bears so that might have been a good reason to keep uh to keep the gun yeah. close but you do after a while you just he may have had it you know close by but not you know sleeping with it um i never slept with my rifle when i camped out i, I even unloaded it and had it in my truck just in case you know game wardens or any, anybody ever came up you didn't sleep with a pistol under your pillow? No. No. I rarely ever had a pistol out there. I always, I always had one in my truck, mm -hmm. and, and I still do. Uh, but, you know, that's... I haven't, I haven't shot my pistol, any one of my pistols, since 2017. I, I haven't shot mine in a while either. I mean, I still clean them, you know, at least whatever I carry. I don't know how in the world. Once a month you would shoot that casul. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, it, it, it would probably break your own eardrums. I've got thing. a 45 and a 10 millimeter and neither one of them are fun to shoot because they're so powerful and loud. That 10 millimeter, you better be hanging on. Yeah, no, that's, that's a stout <clears> gun. <throat> Here's that's a question. Miss Maria bird. Who's done some producing for us recently uh what would you guys do if you were taken and how would you try to escape you know that's situational and i mean taken i think it's i think it's happened other times mm -hmm. absolutely when you look at you know you hate to bring up missing 411 when there's no real answers to go there but when you look at some of these complicated, no other way things can happen, and you know these beings are out there, at least those, maybe there are others. Maybe there's a certain type that does this, and that is that is asserted. They call them uh, gugways, I think. The face eaters that take mm -hmm. people and are cannibals. But it's like uh, there's, I don't know what the distinction is, there's, and that, that's why I always come up with the whole typing thing, because I've heard people type them in different ways. So who's right? 
you know, what is consensus when it comes to typing a SAS watch? And is it even, should, should we even do it? How can you type it? So, I mean, let's think about this. The face eaters, right? Okay. Like you're going to be able to say, oh, I saw a face eater. We won't look, weren't we? We haven't even seen the face of a Sasquatch since Patty and then Scott Carpenter, uh, Swan Lake, Bigfoot, Robert, Crypto Reality, uh, Jesus from Breaking Bigfoot. Now you're starting to see these the faces of these creatures along with their body and <clears throat> and features more. But before then, no one was getting anything like that. Yeah, Patterson Gimlin. Otherwise, you didn't really see anybody that had the face of of Sasquatch. <clears throat> well, now, don't you think that that the reason we're seeing that is because more and more people are feeling more comfortable doing it? They're not going to get ridiculed and more people out doing it. Yeah, more than just a handful, like there there were for for many years. And I think the only way, the only reason the subject even stayed relevant is because they're real, it's because they're actually out there. And you've had so many people over the years that have had either class A, full on sighting, interaction, or a bunch of little stuff that goes on around like Pam and Paul, like Miss Stacy in Oklahoma that I just talked to. They're having all kind of problems out there on, on their place. And um, I've actually got the email she wrote. Um, Jack talked to him today. He's got a bunch of stuff going on uh, or not going on now, but uh, I finally got to my emails. I had 726. <laughs> only I was only only about 80 <clears throat> that were actual big foot odyssey emails for me, uh, but I still haven't gotten to all of them. So y'all just please be patient. But I mean, thank goodness. If, I mean, don't you think YouTube had a? You can you can say YouTube slash the internet, but the only place you can put anything on the internet basically from the get go was YouTube. So yeah, so Facebook, Facebook, yeah. YouTube. I don't know. I guess you can do Instagram, Instagram, and Twitter, and there there are plenty of places to put stuff now. <clears throat> and people used to send me. A lot of stuff i used to get images footprints and some still do but i used to get a lot more and people would send me links to shows they wanted me to watch and uh, when i got time you know i'd check them out so i don't uh, i don't go looking for bigfoot stuff the way i used to uh you know being involved and having to do you know work in, inside on our own stuff um so i don't know if there's any more good stuff out there. I mean, usually if it's a good image, someone's going to send it to me, no matter who shows it. So you just, you don't see a lot, you know, Mark and Melanie, no one's, no one's gotten more than they have. And uh, it is a special situation, uh, what they have down there with the, the apples and all. And if they hadn't done that, they wouldn't have. But they've been working that area for so years. long. Years and years and years. They just, they know them. They know as soon as they step out, that an apple's getting thrown. Mark told, Mark told me something. And I didn't think about this until he told me that he was <clears throat> in the area where we got Banner. And he, was, he wasn't very far in, and he finds an area, 20-foot circle, with nothing like it was swept. There's not. It was just dirt, clean. And right in the middle of it, was what we what we call crab apple or swamp apple the real sour green wild apples was sitting right in the middle of it like a trap hmm. and i just wonder we know they're eating the apples the red apples that they bring but are they using those for bait for hogs inquiring minds <clears throat> Mr. Gary said the military trains you to sleep with your weapon in your sleeping bag. There you go. That's, I believe that. I don't know if Leech Line Harry was in the military. Not that it matters. <clears throat> but you got to think, though, since being an Indian and 
forgive a native Canadian or native, you know, however you want to, what the proper word is. First Nations. You, yes. I mean, but you would think that he, he was so in tune with what was around him that, you know, a noise that was out of place would wake him up. Well, you heard in the beginning of the story. Oh, hey, Steve. What's up, buddy? Um, let me let me just go back through this one part here. Uh, it was in the, in, the, in the beginning of it. According to the Indians, there was once a large number of Bigfoot living on Vancouver Island, a large island, 12,408 miles, about the size of it's bit, yeah, it's bit. A, a big county. Uh, it's that many square miles of 12,408 square miles of area off the west coast of British Columbia. The Indians knew about them, feared them, and respected them, but granted that they were harmless. One of the Indians of the Nootka tribe who lived in Nootka 1928 claims to have been carried off, and that was the Nootka Mushalat Harry. But they knew they were around there. So he had to have at least uh, a basic knowledge and understanding that he could at least see one or run into one or find signs of one. Um, you know, those guys, that's where they lived. That was their house too was the woods i'm talking about the indians <clears throat> they're the closest thing we have to to actual people um you know us being separated from the woods they're the closest ones they were you know th that we know of the last to do it here in the united states to actually live off the land so they had to know but claimed that they were harmless now that kind of stands to to reason what we hear today it doesn't seem like these creatures want to go out of their way to hurt us i don't think there's anything in it for them i think everything they do is predicated upon survival and you can't get these guys to move they don't even they just sit there still <clears throat> i've got a i've got a a, a breakdown that i'm going to do for the odyssey that you are about to see of two different shots of banner, the clear one with the green face. And then the other one with the dark face and the one of the dark face, you can see this thing's hair is coming down in front of his face. And I just, and I kind of make the correlation when you see the other one, his hair is pulled back with that stick. I don't know. That stick is to me is <clears throat> just an incredible thing to have caught and, and to see that. And maybe that's what that's used for because in the other picture, the hair you can see the hair down in the face but you know that's just me making uh making correlations but, but you know what though carrie the, you know back to moose a lot harry you would think he'd be a light sleeper anyway just because of the grizzly bears mountain lions you know he had to sleep very sure i wouldn't think he would be a deep sleeper when he'd be out there Wolves. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I would, you know, you can hear a grizzly bear coming at night and they're not going to be as quiet as a Bigfoot, theoretically. But, you know, it's, we can conjecture. There you're a big guy. Hey, Carrie is a big Tracy. guy. No need for a pistol under your pillow. I tell you, you look like you could still play linebacker. <laughs> okay. I mean, I forgot I forgot how tall you are, and I'm tall. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. son of a well, bitch. Look, my oldest my oldest son, he's six foot seven. Anyway, he's about two eighty. Where's a size eighteen shoe? Talk about a big foot. Yeah, he's a big old kid, but he's one of those millennials, you know. He didn't grow up. He never wanted to hunt or play sports or, uh, you know, he was he's a musician, which, I mean, he got at least something from me. And he looks like me, except he's just taller and bigger. Um, yeah, he's a Sasquatch. But that when I was talking about I have millennial kids, I do. <laughs> One of them's a Marine. So, I, you know, Trace, my 23-year-old, he is he's in Germany. So. <clears throat> I, wow. I do have I do have one that stepped up and served, but the others there would be no way if they were tutted off. 
if I, if I was toted off, but I could, I could imagine what, what my big, huge son would do. Uh, he'd have a heart attack. Oh, he probably uh, would not make it out. He's not a survival kind of guy. I mean, how do you just not just go ape? Gosh, I'm on a cussing binge right now. How do you not just go nuts when one picks you up? I mean, and it obviously doesn't say whether he went nuts or if he just played dead or whatever, but still. After I spoke to God, his hair turned white. Very interesting and true. Charlton Heston's dead. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard to say what you're going to do. You could say, you know, sitting here, you know, behind your computer screen, what you would do and how you would feel. But, you know, I Until think in happens. certain, in certain situations, when it comes to survival, our own instincts, I think kick in and things become more heightened. You start to notice things, you know, if you're, especially if you're afraid for your life. Um, I, I think there's a couple of things that can happen. You can either step up and, save yourself or you can give up and let it all overcome you and oh, you're fight, right. or, I'm... fight or flight uh or freeze those are the other f in there but obviously he was astute enough to know when to get going another captain obvious moment <laughs> oh, sorry. i'm, I'm sharp uh, tonight Looking for questions. You know, I just drove 14 hours. So uh, I was debating on whether to do a show at all. And I was like, you know, it's Friday. We got to, we got to put a show together for, for our folks. No more for me. Carrie, do y'all know how much we love and appreciate you? Bradley, Daniela, Mark, and everyone. Well, that's nice. Yeah, actually. You want to know how much I know? I was on my way here. I don't use debit card. For anything i use credit card because that's not my money that's somebody else's money if anything happens they're responsible not me if you can help it don't ever use your bank card if you have a credit card use it and just pay it off every month <clears throat> i don't i don't pay anything but an annual fee on, on mine so there are cards out there that you can do that but with the way i travel they shut it off on me all the time and i went to get diesel past Dallas after I dropped you off I went to to fill up again to make it here and my car didn't work mm, that's lovely yeah but what I had was what you guys had given actually went to PayPal and there was like 130 bucks in there that had been there that had been collecting up and that's what I used to get here so uh thank you all very much that's how much i know you guys love me and love us don't say me yes you love me not everybody else just me but you know and, and uh, then <laughs> with, when they do that then you have to go through the rigmarole of remembering your dad's social all the questions that they the security questions right. that, that yeah, yeah i have to call them yeah i have to call them every time and i what's could have done that what's your favorite dog's name what's yeah. your first I, concert I, yeah. <laughs> I could have done that. I could have called them, but I didn't have to because I had that. It was just there. And uh, shout out to Jack Melton and Francis Bono for for the PayPal donations. Thank you all so much. Um. Okay, that was no more for me. I'm just looking for a question. There's our our good friend, Sawdust oh, Beast, Mark hello, Newbill. Mark. And, you know, I, I, I messaged Mark the other day to see if he'd come do the show with me. And totally, I thought about Brent from Paranormal Portal. That's who I need to call from now on is Brent. Because he's always, I, I, I messaged him after that. He said, man, you should have messaged me. I was like, oh, I had 15 minutes. But we made a show out of it anyway. All right, we got here. Thanks for the story. and Pray for Daniela Carey. Bramley. <laughs> and, and, well, Bailey what, and Mark thank you Victoria's Secret and, and, and I do want to say thank you for everybody who messaged me uh, quite unexpected but, but very kind and, and just made me feel very humble that uh, it, was just, it was just nice 
because this is this broken foot thing is just a pain. Oh, it's driving me nuts. Oh, well, it's good to see you up on two feet and without a boot on. So, well, you, you saw my yeah. the X-ray. I mean, the X-ray is just yeah, it's mangled. <laughs> it's yep. not good. I'm not laughing at you, man, but I mean, well, it's, I don't it's, know how you're walking yeah. around on it. <clears throat> yeah, drugs only work. So, you know. It's just one of those things. You get old stuff happens to you. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? Sit back and not do anything or. I got you know. sick first time in a long time. And it took me two weeks to get over it. So, And still got some residual. Here's Jackie Myers Lumen says, did the guy say if the bones were human? He didn't. But could you imagine? Oh. I mean, you have to think the worst at, at any given uh you know, crisis, you know, prepare yourself for the worst. You're looking around, you're seeing big bones, you know, bones, period, laying around. Where did they come from? Obviously, these 20 creatures that are standing around there staring at you did that. Well, think about that. You see all those bones. You got 20 of them. I mean, you, you got to make a run for it. So if they're going to get you, you'd rather not know that they're going to get you. And sit there looking at it, knowing that they're coming at you, right? That's the worst feeling. That is the worst feeling to get almost out and just know that they're behind you, just about to, just before you make it. Because, you know, that's a thought, too. Anybody would have to think in a situation like that, like the situation I was in. I was about to and say, I thought you it. just had that same thing. Sure. This happens all the time. People don't live to tell about it. That's what I'm didn't thinking. You, didn't you say that you thought you were kind of out and then you realized, oh, you had to back up? Your oh, yeah, that, or, was, that yeah. was the abs that was the worst. And, I, and I'll probably say it four or five times through there that I think this was the most terrifying part. But what terrified me was when he walked away and I couldn't see him anymore. And I felt like maybe I was going to pass out. I don't know, but I started to feel things i could feel my breathing i could feel my heart you know i'm actually noticing uh these things that i wasn't noticing before and then like heat on the periphery and talking to linda she told me you know when you come down from adrenaline you can actually pass out and so maybe that's what was happening as i was you know coming down from a sharp hit but i try to shake myself out of it and turn and go and get my backpack so i could get the hell out of there but yes, that last part where when I heard the tree break, standing at the top of that hill, and I could see my four-wheeler, and that's the first time I ran was then. And I was 33 years old, 34. I was in pretty damn good shape, too. I was only five years out of boxing, which is the only reason I look like I do now is because of all the exercise and working out I did in my late 20s. <clears throat> kind of held on to it but, but that's but that's what we, I, that was that was the worst but aren't we ingrained from watching all the friday the 13th and halloween's that that like right when you're about to get out is when they get you you think yeah. you think you have you, you think you have see the light at the end of the tunnel and then bam you get got not like in there just right when you're almost out you take a deep breath yeah and then you, you get through it and you get to the truck and you realize <clears throat> that it actually is real. It actually did happen. No one was messing with you and no one's going to believe it, man. No one's going to believe this. And then, then it really hits you, man. Nobody How? is going to believe me. I wouldn't have believed anybody that told me not then. How, How long did it take me? you to get your keys out of your pocket when you got to your truck? No, I left the keys in my truck. Okay, you know, you did. I was, yeah, I left every. I always left everything in the truck. Nobody ever. It was at their house. Nobody yeah. ever messed with anything. And I didn't have anything. My rifle was in there, but I, you know, for years I had been going there. It was no, never no, no need to lock anything. Even if them or one of the kids went to my truck and got something, it would have been fine with me. Um, I, I wasn't. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna <clears> say you just made me think of something so funny. Opening weekend deer season. You know, 5.30 in the morning, going out to the stand. I think I hit my alarm to set my alarm on my truck like five years in a row. 
on an opening morning of deer season mm -hmm. just because you're used to doing it. And, you know, when, when it's quiet and, you know, the lights go on, I mean, it's just, you're just, oh, you talk about feeling like an idiot. You know, you're just letting them know, yes, I'm here. Run. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, that's, that's what, that's when you go, God, you know, I am blonde. Oh, well, you know, we all have our moments. <laughs> Danny Church. Carrie, what does your kids think about your site? My kids know. My kids are knowers. All four of them. All my boys. They know when I talk about it that I'm serious. That there's no way their dad would have held on to something for this long uh, if it wasn't true. And pursue it the way that we pursue it now. And we didn't pursue it. I didn't pursue any of it for a long time, not for 10 years. But the subject had been really brought forward in the early 2010s. Uh, finding Bigfoot first and then uh, Sasquatch Chronicles. You know, there was this flood, this influx of stories and more more people coming out with their story and you know it, it was time the big deal for me if it wasn't for crypto reality and what they had done and that's why i hold them so far up is i wouldn't be doing this if i had not seen what he was showing was exactly what i had seen almost exactly like this is it no, I hadn't, I hadn't seen anybody else that was showing me what I had seen. Now, you listen to all the stories and, and the way these things sound, and sometimes you hear the word caveman, but most of the time it's, you know, ape, man, somewhere in between. And there are those out there. We've got images of them that, that look like that. This guy right here, let me show you. I, I tell you, you, the, you the bring guy a that I call point. The guy I call the king. Go ahead. No, you bring a great point about what got you to start doing this. I mean, yours was that. I mean, when I had my first knee replacement, I was bored, popped up YouTube and, and just searched Bigfoot. and just literally went through the stage, you know, the ones like the, the ones that catch your eye, like, oh, I want you know, a Bigfoot scream. You know, I, I think very right. early on when I started here, I... I Desert Sasquatch, which he hasn't done anything in a long, long time. I watched some of his stuff, and there was a scream that he caught that, you know, the hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I was like, holy shit, I've heard that noise. And that's, that's what kind of got that's me into $10. it. That's, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. And that's what, and that's subsequently when I found you guys, and I loved watching the Odysseys because I liked the very ends when you and Linda would, would – bs oh yeah you, the outros yeah i mean those were that's but y'all you and i and, you and i did the last one yes and we were I still can't find this picture i cannot find this picture i know i had it up here i just showed it the other day it was right here and now is that it no it's not it gosh it's been that long since we did copeland's here it is right here now, all you see is his eyes and his nose, just a little bit of his mouth, the corner of it. And with no context and I can me not able to point anything out to y'all, um, I'll show you what you should be looking for. For those of you that haven't seen this, um, there it is a little bit further back. But I've, I've got it outlined here. I know I do. No, that's not it. That's another one with this nose. They do that. They just stick their nose and their eyes, and you see the brow ridge. All right, that's the picture. There it is. That's what you're looking for. You can see the eyes, nose, and mouth right there. So just to give you some context. <clears throat> and you can see the whites in his eyes, and you see that his nose perfect, but he's a lot more apish. And this guy right here is enormous. Those pine trees, I did not think those pine trees were that big until I went to this place. And you see those three pine trees, they look like they're right next to each other, but they're, they're not. Like saplings. 
Yeah. Well, it's planted pine. So they're all in a line. And those trees, there's about 20 feet between those trees. And he's behind them. And those are full grown pine trees. Those are 12, 13 inch pine trees, you know, 15 year growth stuff. His nose has got to be six inches wide. Got to be. That's a lot of critter. Yeah. Just a massive, massive guy. And, but, and then you look at Banner. Not, not very apish at all. Just very, especially here when they sharpened it up for us. Jesus did that for us. So, you know, I know you guys are probably tired of seeing all that stuff. <clears throat> Dash. I, and I wish we could get Dash to come on the show and talk about what happened. Uh, because I Dash won't go in the woods. Dash, and he was 10 years old. He was, he was well, he was I, my or age, she. I don't I, know if you're a guy or a girl, Dash, so I'm sorry. Well, that's how old I was, and I didn't. I didn't know what I saw. I just thought it was a, a a black man in the woods, you know, walking someplace. Yeah. I mean, well, I it, it wasn't until later till, you know, after seeing uh, the legend of Boggy Creek when it all kicked in. And then Amazing. I told my cousins in Alabama and then they would scare me at nighttime. As cousins yeah. would do. When you're the youngest. Right. <laughs> kind of goes with territory. Crystal wants to know, is your channel still doing research reports? Yes. Yeah, we do on Wednesdays. Wednesdays is usually research report or a Wednesday encounter. Or like I did this last one, I didn't have either one to do. So I just did get the old, one of the old standbys. And we'll probably do that again. Uh, bring out more of the, the more well-known stories and just tell maybe a few and talk about them. Um, again, we didn't have a program, a plan for tonight. We just, me and Brad said, you know what, we'll just sit down and tell that story and talk about it a little bit and, uh, and take some questions. Here we got relaxation and deep sleep. You can only imagine what may have happened if you passed out. I know, right? Oh. And then you're winding maybe up three upside down. Maybe. I mean, thinking then, yeah. I will, but thinking now, I don't know. I don't think they would have done anything. I think he was angry and upset. But it was so, it seems like a lot longer than it actually was. The whole thing, and I've done this a couple times, if I sit and I think about when I first saw it, him, her, it, until I couldn't see it anymore, it was about a minute. When I, I look at my watch and I'll think, okay, it took about this long to get around here. I mean, he came up, did his thing, about 20 seconds maybe total at that tree, which was an eternity for me. It's a long time. Hold your breath 20 seconds. But all that stuff that happened, me getting my hand on the gun, him lunging toward me, you know, like oh, with the huff or blow or whatever it was, and then – you know, looking upside down at me, walking away. Wasn't that long. It was all pretty quick. But you had to be in shock. When I got, finally, yeah. I think, uh, I didn't, I don't know if I was in shock then or not, because I don't remember a ton of the walk out. I remember praying, but I don't remember a whole lot of just that, Think what I was thinking, I think coming to that area and all the, I want to say things were pouring back to me then everything that had happened out there that I hadn't experienced anywhere else. I hadn't had the kind of constant knocking and hearing the kids hearing something big crashing through the woods. I, I would see does just hooked up running. Nothing after them. Just I could be sitting over the over the creek bed, up in a twenty feet up a pine tree, in a tree climber, and just watch four does come smoking down the creek bed. I mean, I could hear them coming, and I could hear them going. There was no slowing down in between. The very first time I saw deer out there, I counted there was seventeen does, yarlings, and spikes, and they were all trotting. 
They weren't walking. If a deer, if a doe came into the grass patch or the corn, the feeder, she came in quick, ate, and gone. It was the strangest thing. I've never seen deer behave that way anywhere else. Yeah, usually they would linger, they'll linger where you almost have to chase them off. And zero hogs, no hog sign, of course, except for the time, you know, that I thought I had walked up in the middle of them. But the whole time I was there, I never saw hog sign. You know, hogs, you can, you can tell when hogs are around, they'll wallow in the mud, and then they'll rub up against trees. So there'll be mud on the lower parts of the trees, you know, where the hogs are around. And their tracks are, you know, similar to deer tracks, but there's a difference, and you can tell. So I never, never saw a hog hog track nothing out there the entire time except for i think it was the year before when i had gotten lost and walked up in the middle of them and it was a bunch of big bodies that night scared me that scared that scared me uh because hogs are if they'd have gotten you on the well, ground yeah. you'd have been gone well i'm already lost right i have an idea of about where I am because I found the creek bed, but it's dark and I don't know how far I am, you know, because I walked around for probably four hours through the thick stuff, probably going in circles until I found the low area and actually found the creek bed. But walking out of there and I was probably, I had the big mag light and my rifle and I'm, I probably shined it right on them. And all of a sudden just commotion, bodies, leaves up both sides of me i'm down in in the creek not in the creek but i'm in the creek bed <clears throat> you know it's like like a little shelf kind of like a floor yeah. plane maybe that's where i am you know just following the creek till i can because i know where that comes out by the road but they didn't go they didn't run away they went straight behind me not far 20 30 feet and stopped and i remembered that vividly because I thought they were coming back. That's hogs. They just went right there. Here they come. And I'm shining my light. Never saw eyes shine or anything like that. And I'm holding. I've got my arm around an oak tree. Probably about like that oak tree. With the light and my rifle in the other hand. like this, Ready to get up this tree. If, you know, they start to come back. I can, you know, jump up and, you know pull myself up to where they can't hook me. And that's what I was waiting for, but they never did. I didn't hear them trail off. I just heard commotion, bodies, and then that was it. Done. Were they, were they squealing when they took off? No, what I heard was <laughs> breathy, kind of like a grunt maybe. And I thought, I thought I remembered like running. Two legs but animals when they run you can't tell if it's two legs or four legs when they're running when they're walking you can tell but if they're trotting it sounds just like somebody walking through the woods with two legs it's usually when hogs when, when you when you jump up hogs they will run for a long time they never stop or at least in what's you know my and i've fortunately or unfortunately i've shot a lot of hogs and you know, that they'll just keep going. It may have been hogs, Brad, because it does seem out of character for the way these creatures are. It could but, have been. Or maybe I was just that close to them. Maybe I got that close and I shined my light and maybe they thought, I don't know. I saw you think it, the Spider Man. You think they would, it could have been juveniles? Maybe. If it was them, I think it was. Uh, it's, yeah. And, and maybe I missed daydreaming and missed part of it, but. Yeah, I don't know. I never saw anything. It was commotion, you know, and I'm startled first. And the first thing I'm looking for is which tree to get up. Right. Because that's what comes to you immediately when you're in a situation like that. What else could it be? This has got to be hogs. And you get, you know, a 400 pound razorback, a 300 pound razorback. You're, you're done. If he gets oh, yeah. after you and you've got no way to protect yourself, you're not getting away. No, you, you'll be dead so fast. And then they'll eat you, like in uh, Deadwood. Yeah. Well, they, they just run into you. They don't 
it's not like they they come and jump on you they just hit you with their head they'll knock you down turn around and then they'll just loop get you with a tusk sling you in the air hook you while you're in the air yeah they're mean and you know the males obviously the ones with the tusk that you really got to worry about but a female mama with babies she'll take yeah. a couple runs at you yeah i uh, just the way you tell that story it had to have been it had to be spider legged or you know, down on all fours because uh, it was quick man it was fast and they were at least four it could have been more but it was like breathy grunting and just commotion leaves i mean there's nothing but deciduous trees in those bottoms so there was leaves everywhere i mean it was this thick with leaves because i've kicked up hogs hunting uh you know where somebody will shoot a deer and they can't find it and then but there's a blood trail and you go trail you know and i've kicked up hogs before when you kick them up they run i mean it's I, oh wow that's 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 creepy yeah but uh, and you know the, the other thing that that and here's one th- about your story when he came and confronted you you knew he respected you because of the gun. That's why he probably did it out in front Maybe. instead of behind you and doing that. Maybe he wouldn't have done anything had I not waved at him. Thought about that too. Maybe he would have thought I couldn't see him. Like I never saw him before, but right. now I see him. Now you're acknowledging him. And now he's but he wasn't, do it. he wasn't hiding. He was walking. He wasn't trying to hide. He was walking through that thicket and just moving, moving his head. Do you remember how you said it? We all have heard it where you'll hear something and you think a buck's getting ready to bust through and you're sitting there waiting and you'll you'll hear the noise. You know, the buck's coming through. You're waiting and then nothing. Dude, it happened. It happened dozens of times. It happened so much. It happened to me so much in this one place that I quit doing it. I just quit going there. Right. And I wasn't, I was, I'm still looking over the same uh, food plot and bottom as my shooting house, but I'm on the edge of the thicket and I'm looking down the tree line. So, and that's uh, when I said I would get on my belly and put my rifle in front of me and crawl like they do in the Marines, you know, under yeah. that's what I did because that area, that bottom came through and wrapped all the way around and just kind of, went off back into someone else's property. But I knew the deer always came from that direction. So they would come through that bottom and out. And I didn't want to walk down the hill and walk through the bottom and leave my scent. But I wanted to still catch the deer while it was daylight coming to the food plot. So I stayed on top of the hill and just crawled through. That was that's how thick it was. Well, there's a pine tree, a huge pine tree with not a limb on it for 30 feet. So yeah. I would get as far up that as I could where they couldn't smell me as, as well and hit that can. And I hit that can two or three times. And here he come. I mean, almost every single time. And I think I remember getting down and maybe trying to slip in there, but it was too thick. I mean, you talk to the new bill, he'll tell you that's the thickest woods you ever been to the undergrowth, just unkept. No one ever went out there. So it was so thick with briars and underbrush and privet hedge and, and you know, small oak trees everywhere. It was just, yeah. uh, it, it's too thick to, to really do anything in there without some elevation. But it, it, but it would come to the edge of that thicket about 40 feet away. I mean, popping limbs, Pow, tsh, crash coming toward me and stop. And of course, it's a huge bug. Right. With a rock with a rocking chair on his head. Uh-huh. In my mind, is what it always was. There Double was a drop buck. Tines. Oh yeah. There's a buck out here that is just beating me. I can't get him on camera. I can't <laughs> he's I cannot pin this guy down. And that wasn't the case. I I'm I'm positive that was them. But, but you know, hearing when I heard your story for the first time, it made me go back and think of all the places that I've hunted for 30 years, 30, 40 years. And just situations like that, when you think a, a buck is 
I mean, it's just racing hell. And you're and you're waiting, and I mean, it just stops. It's like the noise stops, and nothing. And you're like, okay, if he's making that much noise, how does he backtrack? You know, how does he get out of there? And that happened a lot. And it was, yeah. you know, more. Uh, That's what seeing this thing does to you. It doesn't just affect you going forward. It's everything you've ever done. You know these things had to be around. It's not like they just showed up, and I see them now. They've always been around. They've always been watching me. It probably didn't matter where I went. If you hunt, you've probably been watched. Oh, just saying. I for three years in West Texas, out near Albany. Every time I would get out of my stand and walk to my truck, it would sound like somebody was was hammering in a fence post from the same spot. You know, it sounded like half a mile away, quarter mile away. And it happened all the time that I just expected it. It's like, what are these guys doing hammering every time when it's getting, when it's about dusk? Mm -hmm. And just a few times too. Yeah. Oh, just two or three times. But it, 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 it <laughs> you know, I even went looking to try to find out who was doing it because it started to piss me off just because it always happened. And, you know, and it took me, it took me 20 minutes to get back to the house driving through the woods. You never know, but it does make you think. It makes you think a, yeah. about a lot of stuff. And, and it's funny how you remember those times that just pop up. Huh? Look, it puts you in a really bad place because you, it was in you Albany, feel like Texas. first, well, you feel like first, I think, some of the ways I was feeling was very angry. I was very upset because it seems almost obvious even then that this was being kept a secret. This is being kept from us intentionally by who or what. I don't know. The creature itself make it hard enough. I mean, we can't even get a clear picture of one. They're that good at staying away from us. We have to have these special situations and special circumstances where there's probably a lot in the area and a relatively small area and there's some habituation happening. They're being fed in or coaxed somehow, whether it's just to watch you or to get, you know, a juicy, sweet red apple. Um, that's the only way we're able to do it. And what's sad about that is that's probably all we're ever going to get doing it that way. Unless it gets to the point after 20 or so years and you're able to just toss an apple to one and get a picture of it, you know, or a video of it. Hopefully I, that'd be I the saw, case. I saw a comment right here. I'm not, and I rarely put up stuff. But along for the right said that she lives in Abilene. And I believe it was Cam that read There's a story about yep. a one in Breckenridge that somebody sent a story into him. And Breckenridge is a hop, skip, and a jump from Albany. So you never know. There was a water hauler. There was a water hauler that told the story seeing one in Garden City. Really? San Angelo, Garden City area. There's trees there. Right. But it's, it's not that many. Right. You know, I, I've got mountains. I can see the mountains where I am. I can see the Davis range here and the Guadalupe Pass. I can, that, that's 20 miles. I can see the mountains are just right there. Miss Diane remi <clears throat> reminded me that I'm <clears throat> old and out of shape. Now, yeah, uh, what I would do now, how would I manage it now? Uh, I've already decided this. I'm going to belly up and succumb. If y'all are going to get me, come get me. Camera's going to be rolling. Hopefully, someone will find it. So always let someone know where you're going, Bigfoot researchers, just in case you get nabbed up and we can find your camera later. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, at least, at least, let, let, yeah, the camera. Got to know where the camera is. Charles McDonald says, Carrie, I think making a place for others to safely share their experiences with Bigfoot has done more for the subject than any of the TV episodes could ever do. Thank you, Bigfoot Odyssey. I love it. Thank you, Charles. It means that's a lot. Nice, Charles. But, uh, you know, Sasquatch Chronicles did it before we did. <clears throat> there, there are several others out there doing it. Steve Isdall tells people stories. Cam Buckner. That's all he does. Tell people stories. Dixie Cryptid. Uh, the facts by how to hunt. That's Steve Isdall. Um, who else? Well, Sawdust Beast have a lot of good Sawdust Beast. On. I mean, 
Yeah. But no, I, I appreciate what you're saying, Charles. And this is, uh, it, it, we didn't, we didn't set out to do this. When we started Bigfoot Odyssey, Linda and I started out to tell people's odyssey, to tell people's journey dotted with experiences and excitement to me. You know, if you look at Homer's <clears throat> The Odyssey, that was his definition of the word. So that's why uh, Sasquatch Journey, I thought about that as being a name for the show. Um, Sasquatch Crusade was another name I had come up with. Uh, but we settled on Bigfoot Odyssey because it kind of rolls off and has a, it's got a ring to it. And then, <clears throat> but yes, no, uh, uh, we appreciate that. And this actually turned into that. I had done a live show. I just went live to, to comment or react to something that was going on in the community. And I can't remember what it was. You can look back, but I'm just walking around with my phone in my hand live. And like 250 people showed up. I was like, hmm, we might be able to do this. So that's when I got with Daniela and came up with the researcher's report, which originally was going to be Bigfoot researchers interviewing other researchers. And I was going to have a rotation to them, but it was too much to put together and I couldn't get. So I just asked Daniela if she would do it with me and we would interview people and researchers and <clears throat> just putting as much information out there that people had and and then try to create. I don't know if we're a hub for this stuff. Um, I think New Bill and them, they do very well. Sawdust Beast, Mark and Larry. But, I mean, who doesn't love those guys? They are funny. <clears throat> Oh, thank you, Cashew. Yep, that's the, the Crypto Odyssey website. If you want to go watch The Impossible and see the full clip, you'll get to see the clip of Banner in there. Incredible. The only thing was, uh, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I just read what Diane said, and I kid you not, when I saw Carrie today and I gave a big old hug, I could have bounced off of him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if one ever comes after, if one after, come, if one ever comes after us, Mark and I are going to be getting behind you. <laughs> you're not a small guy either. I know, but you're probably I'm still faster than I am either. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when it comes down to it, slow people can run fast in certain situations. Yeah. When urged to. This yeah. is uh, Miss Sharon has a good question here. She, do you have any advice on what and what not to do if anyone has a sighting? Um, you know, I'm, I would never presume to have any good advice for anyone that sees one. Like I said, these things are situational. It's like running into somebody. You just don't know what kind of person this is, this is that you're coming you know, in contact with, what kind of day they had. Um, you know, human beings, we're, we're led by our emotions. Have they said a bunch of chiggers, you know, they got bites all over them. Yeah. If those things affect them, we don't, we just don't know, but advice, if you get through it, um, contact the BFRO, that's still the best place to, to report your sighting. Um, they'll probably send someone out eventually. Uh, that's that's in your area. Um, again, there 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 are a lot of questions, uh, or uh, I think situations that may come up within this sighting, are happening, or you know, or whatever that would probably need to be addressed to to give any real advice. I don't. I wouldn't shoot one. That yeah, would be a no no. I think don't shoot it. Don't, because don't if even there's point one, at it. We say it all the time. If there's one, you know there's two more. And if you shoot yeah. one, you're going to be swimming with the fishes. And depending on what you got, you yeah. know, what kind of gun, even a high-powered rifle, which I think would kill one. I just do. I don't think they would survive a 7-millimeter magnum to the yeah, chest. Shot him in the arm, all you do is 
make them mad. Yeah, that's the thing is missing your target. You know, oh. shoot them in the head. I think you could probably kill one. I mean, if it can take down an elephant, it would probably take one of these guys. Well, if, 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 if but, can, yeah. I was just going to say, anyway. if, you can shoot, if you can shoot into an engine block, you probably can hurt one. Yeah. 357 to shoot through an engine block. Yep. <clears throat> and it's just because of the speed of the, for the high-powered rifle, it's the speed of the bullet, you know. I'm talking about 2,200 feet per second. I don't know how to relate that. It's fast. <laughs> anyway. Um, Miss Jean, I minute mean, is a lifetime. Yeah, it is. When they say time, time is definitely relative to the observer. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. That is true. It goes slow when you're not. <laughs> um, do Bigfoots blow like deer blow? Um, I've heard. I have, I mean, the guy that I saw kind of blew at me. He didn't really yell. It was more like, <gasps> like, you know, breath out <gasps> quick, but you know, still it was a warning without a doubt. That was a warning. If it doesn't sound right, it usually isn't. Yeah. And that's another thing is when you're trying to discern what you think might be a Sasquatch from say an owl or a wolf or, uh, you know, coyotes or any other animal that makes, you know, fox and bobcats make some really, really strange noises. But I think it's important to identify those first. So when you hear an owl, so it's important to note that barred owls are pretty territorial. This very seldom that you're going to find two, uh, you know, that are close together. You know, you may hear one way off hoo -hoo, hoo, and then way off the other way. And, but when you have people that are surrounded by five or six and they're just who in a way that's out of the ordinary. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I see I see my name, so this is KG. Carrie, it's funny you say hold your breath. I average the length of my encounter to how how long it takes me to feel woozy from holding my breath and going without blinking at the same time. All right. Yeah, because you look, you do those things. How long, how long was it? A minute? A lifetime. That is that's a long time. A minute. And I probably wasn't fully aware of what it was for half that time so yeah i mean when your adrenaline gets going like that time i mean time just well at this in. point at this point it's just what i can remember right uh, and i've told it enough that what i tell is the way i remember it <clears throat> there could have been other things that happened in there that i just didn't remember Hey, it wasn't until I did uh, Barb Charlton's emotional freedom techniques that uh, that I remembered pulling the mesh off my face and waving my hand. There were several things in there that I'd remembered just <clears throat> because that's what she does. She puts you back there. She makes you. She'll tell you, you need to put yourself back there because you need to get this feeling so we can work on how to get rid of it. And that's what she did. <clears throat> and I mean, I, I don't know how much of it is psychosomatic, you know, these pressure points, but it did work to a degree. When I did, when I was prepping for 168 and I would just go into the woods, the edge of the woods for like five minutes or stay there as long as I could. And uh, I start to get that that washed over feeling and that's when i did it the most was then but i didn't do it for donnie millers and you can tell i did it i got ready for pam and paul's i was expecting mm. everything that happened i was expecting a lot more so i i taught myself expect expect it when you least expect it and I still that's when it happens if you're looking yeah. for, it's, it's like when you were and i'll say this is boys when you're in high school 
going to the mall and I'm dating myself, looking for girls, you would never find them. But when you weren't looking, they would find you. Kind of, that's that's my goofyism. I'll leave it at that one. There you go. Crystal, Bigfoot and Reservoirs, do you think a good spot? What does it take? What do we survive on for our humans? Food, water, shelter. I don't think these creatures need shelter the way we do. I think they're perfectly fine from the Arctic to the equator. I don't, I'm not sure temperature affects them the way it affects us. Uh, it doesn't, unless they can do something to control their body temperature. I don't know. We tend to anthropomorphize these creatures and put our own human limits on them. And uh, we just, we don't know enough about them and what they do and, and, and how different they are from place to place and what the differences are. And I mean, all we have are the anecdotes and the researchers that, that are around when they're having interaction, but you're not getting them in their natural habitat. Not when you're around, they're hiding from you. So you're, you're for us to study them the way they would naturally be when no one's around. What would you need? You'd need something silent and invisible. And that's what I think those silent drones are doing, studying these things down there. But water, yeah, a reservoir, absolutely. I think water is essential. Pam and Paul have a creek running right through their yard. I had a creek running right through the area I was in. <clears throat> it's got to be water around. Uh, Brown Springs, the river is right there. So I think habitat, food, <clears throat> food, the habitat is going to determine the wildlife anyway. If there's a bunch of deer, there's going to be a bunch of coyotes. There's going to be bobcats. There's going to be fox. There's well, there's a bunch of prey. There are going to be a bunch of predators also. And I think, and especially with I, hogs, I think these going crazy. Yeah, and maybe these creatures do migrate. I don't know. I wouldn't let anybody tell me for sure that they do, because you'd have to tell me how you know that. And well, I only have activity during this time of year. Is not a good enough answer, because they can be there and not giving themselves away <clears throat> the whole time, except for times of year when the foliage is thick. Or maybe you see them, see them more during the cold winter months uh, when food gets a little bit more scarce. I don't know. We're talking about the same old stuff. I'm looking for another question. I'll see one. We're past our hour. Wow, good bit, too. I tell you what, you've, you've, you've uh, <clears throat> hit a second, second wind. You've been up for almost what? Jeez, twenty hours. Yeah, I got up at two thirty this morning, so been up for a while. Frankie Brown, she's our one sixty eight field director. Carrie, have you waved and said hello to the ones you've interacted with lately? No, no, I don't. I'm not sure I've interacted with anything. They've been around us, and you sh you could absolutely call it encounters. I mean, we knew they were there. We just didn't know where they were. Uh, when, you know, Mark and I were getting the banner shot, there are several others that we got there also. You'd have to go and go rent the film. You can get to see them. <laughs> um, That's a good plug. Go but ahead. I haven't talked to them. I haven't said anything. No. Maybe I should. What are you going to say? We'll Thanks try. for not scaring me. Go back down to the spot where Banner was and say, hey, look, man, just – I just want to get a picture with you, you know? Tell him to scare Mark so you can film it. <laughs> uh, maybe you would say scare me, but I'd probably, anyway. Along for the ride, says Brad, this was in Albany. Albany. She's in Albany. She's in, uh, yeah, Albany. She's Abilene. in, she's in Abilene. Yeah. I and, just came, I just came through Abilene. At Albany is about an hour well, Baird is about an hour east of uh, Abilene, and then you go up about 30 miles to hit Albany. Wow. I'm skipping the jump. Sky Eye 051. Human ignorance is Bigfoot's greatest camouflage. That's profound. That's, I'm still. We might use that, that one. Yeah. I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you credits for that, Sky Eye, when I do use it. Who said that? Bradley Hatcher? Yeah. <laughs> 
So true. I mean, that's good. That's, that's good. It is our ignorance and it's willful. That's that the will. thing. It's we're well, trying to what? tell people, we're trying well, to tell people and show people that these damn things are out there. But at so the same out. time, we don't want to see the boogeyman when we're hunting. Well, no, you don't. But there's nothing wrong with being mindful and aware that they can be around. You've hunted oh, yeah. this long without incident. There's no reason really to think that anything else is going to happen. That was never my issue with going back hunting, aside from the fact that I made a promise to God that I'd never kill another animal. That was one reason to never go back. But for me, I would have not been able to do what I was there to do. Not not the way I did it. I thought I was the greatest thing ever. If you would have asked me then, you couldn't have told me nothing. Nothing. I was not, uh, I say this kind of off the cuff, that I was not a good person, but I wasn't. And I knew I wasn't. And it was purely rebellion. Is all but, it was. But you also made a promise. Child. You also made a promise to God when you were getting out of there and you kept it. I that's, went right back to him. I turned away and he said, yeah. Not happening. Shake you out of your tree here a little bit. God, that but, would be you know, if it hadn't have happened, who knows where I would be right now? Maybe still out there. I don't know. Still bitter. A fool. I wrote, I wrote something about it. <clears throat> I can't, uh, I'll have to find it and I'll read that for y'all one day. Well, I can imagine. Uh, did the blow of the hearse sound like you. a deer blowing? When I hear deer, deer will do this whoosh, really loud. Does will do it especially. And bucks, you know, burp, will grunt. No, no, this was, uh, like a big old dude letting all the air out of his lungs and oh, at the same time, oh, you know, oh, something like that. It was abrupt to me. It was no, you know, you're not going to do anything with that gun. But that was the whole, that was the whole, the start of me pretty much coming apart because I was just frozen before then. And then when I, came off the tree and I ran into that clear and I remember looking to my left a couple of times, but I don't think I did that while he was standing there. And then he sticks his tongue out and I can't remember if he did that before he shook the tree or after. I just know he did it. I just tell it when it's after, but I can't, I can't remember exactly when he did it. There were several things, weird things in there that I recall the huff the sticking the tongue out. The way he put his head when he looked at me like this. His head's already down here. His shoulders are up here. His head is low. And it's a, a football-shaped head, essentially, from the side. Long face. When I say he looked like Scotty Pippen, it's not a disparagement against Scotty Pippen. It's just Scotty has these long features. He's got the long, pointed nose with with the bridge, you know. And this is the way this guy was uh, resembled the old. If you look at Scotty Pippen and look at the old images you used to see of the devil, the way they would draw mm -hmm. the devil with the pointed, you know, pointed the nose and face. beard. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what it reminded me of. And I have a picture I drew that's. Has anybody ever this, asked you? In 2018, that reminds me a lot of it. The nose isn't right. The hair is definitely not right. His hair wasn't that long, but I'm not an artist. That took me all day and a lot of erasing. But And it's not exactly perfect. The, his mouth was much more protruding, apish-like. And I don't know what his eyes looked like. But them big old ball cheeks and that long nose was probably a little wider than that, too. When he stuck his tongue out at you... Did that elicit a thought or was it just so no idea. Boom, 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 boom. You know, just everything. Boom, 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 boom. I don't remember. I really don't know. That's a question I've always had for you. Did you just kind of go really? And then 
I don't remember. I, all I remember is him doing it because I remembered how white his teeth looked. And maybe it was just in contrast to the darkness of his face because it was black, right. it was shiny. It was almost like the sun shining. The sun was up. The sun was in my face. I was facing east. It was probably eight, maybe a little after eight o'clock in the morning. Beautiful day. Wind just barely blowing. <clears throat> a March day. And uh, this resembles very much the dude. His face may be a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But this is essentially the guy, the body type, the face type, that black face, cone-shaped mess, hair. Uh, yeah, there you go. Showing the teeth would just be a total, I and mean, you saw me looking in at it, would just be a, such an aggression. Maybe. I don't know. You know, uh, uh, it was all aggressive to me. Yeah. Well, no, of course you know, it was. In my I mean, mind, was, in my mind at the time, I always felt like the gun is what saved me. Probably is. If I hadn't had my gun, he would have got me. And well, and he didn't know if it was a hurt. rifle or a shotgun. No, but they had never seen that gun. It looked different than my rifle. I'd always had my rifle in there. And I know that's why I hadn't taken the plug out of that shotgun because I just got it. And I would, didn't, wasn't even worried about it. You know, I got three shots. I'm turkey hunting. I'm not going to need any more than that. Right. <clears throat> but I had a pocket full of shells still. It's just When you're a hunter, you take plenty of ammo, whether you need it or not. You're not going out with two or three shells. You tend to take the box, you know. Oh, because if you so. take two or three <laughs> shells, you're going to need that fourth one. Always happens. Yeah. <laughs> Always happens. I mean, how many guys do you know that they've gone hunting and only taken two shells with them, and then they needed the third? I've never it's really hunted with other people. I hunted with my dad, and that was it. Well, I was always I, I was dad. hunted on leases, and so we always had like six to eight hunters. There right. was always somebody that took two shells, or or the, the best one was when they get out in the stand and forget and forget to put their bolt in. <laughs> that was, or we had one buddy that left it in Dallas, and we were out. Oh Lord, <laughs> near Coleman, and he tried to go and buy a bolt for his gun. Of course he could. And he, so he had to buy another rifle. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Oh, that was funny. Yeah, I wouldn't I, I never forgot anything like that that I that I can recall where I'd have to turn around and go back. Uh but I never took the bolt completely out of my rifle either. I would just put it back and just have it all the way back and have it in in the case. I never took a bolt out, and especially after I heard that story. Oh, Impossible is excellent. Thank you so much. I'm glad you were watched it and enjoyed it. We put a ton of time into that. Just what you saw there. And there's a lot of stuff that you guys didn't see that uh, you'll get in behind the scenes. Uh, as soon as I'm done with the Odyssey to Crypto Reality, I'm going to start putting together a segment called Cuss Words. And uh, it's just some comic relief, really, of all the cuss words that we say that are called on camera while we're out there. Uh, I mean, I'm going to bleep them out, but you'll get the context of it. You know, you'll you'll get it. I can so, yeah, that one's words. and it's going to be labeled cuss words. So, you know, that one's not for the kiddos. And uh, <laughs> it, it it's just going to be on the site. It's not going to cost you anything to watch. It's just going to be extra. those will be funny. Those yeah. will be funny. Well, that's I why know. I want to do it because some of them, it's always a funny situation when those come out. For me, it is because I'm not, I just don't run around cussing all the time. Something's got to be going on, you know. Well, when we did the end of uh, Mark Copeland's, and it took me forever to get that, get the saying down without screwing it up. I think we shot it like 10 times and, and you did yours perfect. Then once I nailed it, then you couldn't nail yours. And then cuss words were going. <laughs> they were flying. It was funny. Uh, Pam was and Paul, giggle. why do you think the activity has increased this summer at our property? Um, what I think is because you're aware. Because you know they're there and they know you know. That seems to be the case more often than not. As many people as I've talked to, as many places that we've gone and told these people's story. Once they became aware, it's game on. That could be why you're smelling the, the urine all the time now. 
oh, I imagine they're getting very close. There are some places there where Pam was in her pool and Paul stood where the one she saw out just standing there watching her, his hair down in front of his face and he's just out there. Where he was, it's dark in there. It's, I could just see him. Now, the camera can see him okay, but I had Paul wave his hands so we could see him, you know, that that was where he was standing. And, and from her perspective, not, you know, 40 yards, right there, close. And didn't have to go far to not be seen at all anymore. A couple steps back or forward, and he's behind the bush and the trees and everything else. So they'll get, I, I guarantee they're getting close. A lot, they're probably a lot closer sometimes than you actually would want to, or at least like when they know you go to bed. I mean, think. just being honest and, and telling you, Pam and Paul, <clears throat> it would not surprise me to know that you saw one right there on the other side of the road by the house going up where the tree break, where the cedar tree break is. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Spike and melon with southern comfort, daddy shovel. Mm. Only thing about that is uh, probably wouldn't make it to the woods. Watermelon with vodka? Yeah, I mean, I like Southern Comfort. It's all right. I'm not a big drinker, but when I do drink. Ooh, that moonshine. Golly. I can't drink beer. Mm. I can't do it. Uh. Have you contra contacted Sibylla Irwin to draw him for you? Uh, that, that's what she does is draw a PPC. Uh, no, I know who that is. Um, along for the ride, email me, bigfootodyssey at gmail.com. If you got there some contact info, I think that would be cool to have an actual – I had Larry Batson draw Oh, you it. got a Larry Batson mug. I got a Larry Batson mug from from a good friend of mine today. Um, is this no? That ain't it. But there's some some drawings in here that Larry did. Yeah, Daniel must have taken them down. There's only two two drawings here now that I can see, and that's that's is the other one. Larry does pretty good though. He does. He's got us. He's got his own particular style. But um, yeah, uh, uh, we're probably gonna wrap this up. I got what you guys are gonna see in Crypto Realities Odyssey. Stuff people haven't seen for six, seven years. That is just. I, I just sit there and look at it. It's amazing. There is one, Mark, Melanie always filmed Mark doing segments. She would always put him in the side of the frame. So she was filming the woods behind. And he, and they said, he said, I, I smelled them. I, we could smell them. And he was telling Melanie, you know, just because she's filming with an iPad. And this is 30 feet away. They're on the levee. And you see the edge of the trees. And then you go down. It goes pretty steep down into the other side that levee is just like a, a dam you know there's water on one side and then it's just like the bottom side of a dam it's exactly the same thing um so it's probably around eight ten feet down and you see it's a little guy he's four foot if that he may not be between three and four feet tall but you see everything both shoulders you can see from here up you see head perfect face you can see both of its eyes I, I was looking at it today and i'm gonna lighten it up a little bit where you can see it good but i couldn't and mark told me he said he said oh yeah i remember that one vividly i told melanie uh to because they could smell them they were right that close and the flies said so the flies start buzzing you know they're close by mm. when you know they're real close they start getting the flies yeah and that's not a good you see sign. mark you see Mark go into the bush on a different one. And to his left, three feet is what I think is a female sitting there. And you just see there. All you see is this right here. 
and then you can see the cone head a little bit back there but there's bush she's behind the bushes but what's what you can see is this and you see that eye and you see the glaze the the glare coming off the eyeball <clears throat> and not off anything else so it's definitely an eyeball and then the next frame you see this four fingers that look like gorilla's fingers to me up like this in front of his face covering its face amazing amazing but that's what they do this is the behavior we see look at this i don't know if you guys can see that all that is is a nose and upper lip you can see his head just a little bit but there's no telling how many of these we've got where that's all you see is that much and i mean that's hardly proof of anything um there's another one here that i, was I love when you show on. those and i'm sitting here like <laughs> you know looking at my I'm, I'm you know i have a big laptop and i'm still have you seen this is one of my favorites right here all you can see someone said yeah i see the body that's not the body you're seeing there all you can because as you can see it's a different color Mm -hmm. This creature is black, but all you see is from the eyes up. You can see the brow. You can see its hair, really thin hair on its cone-shaped head, and the brow. To me, this is and it's it's really blown up here. Um, that is a creepy one. Yeah, but that whatever that is in front of it, they put that there. Uh. They manipulate the environment. Where is the one? Have you seen mouth open, mouth closed? You seen this one? I drink. Um, mouth closed. He's looking to the right. Okay. You can see his eyeball a little bit, his eye, wide nose. It's really blurry. I see, yeah, the nose is wide. What, right then, long upper lip. Mm -hmm. And just to the left of his nose, you see that blurry line. That's actually a small tree right there because this is the same this is the pan back and his mouth is open it's hard to see so blown up like that but mouth closed mouth open is that is he doing infrasound and look at that look at that wrinkled up forehead i mean my goodness what an ugly thing yippers yeah I mean, I haven't seen a pretty one yet, but <laughs> there's this guy. That's why they like looking at Pam. Swimming. Yeah. Tired of looking at it. At Perry. And Girl. I think that, well, I think that's why they pushed the tree down too, is because we were out there. She usually, when she gets in her pool, there's nobody around. And she was yeah. in there and we were all, I mean, we're sitting up there up the hill with cameras filming and this huge tree comes down insane it's it's crazy the whole thing is just crazy it shouldn't be and i say this all the time now this should not be nuts this should be common knowledge all of it but you, remember, you know how, how all of our grandparents and parents you know you just didn't talk about it they wouldn't you know when you ask my grandparents in alabama my grandmother would hint at it my grandfather just you know, give me the look like you're about ready to get it. I'm gonna have to go get a stick. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm talking about, Carrie. I do. Yeah, South Alabama uh, granddads. Yep. Yep. Miss Chef Yoda, Carrie, why do you think he would have hurt you and wasn't just curious about what you were doing? No, this guy acted like he wanted me. Yeah, I, I had a very, very distinct impression that he wanted to to hurt me. And that's what I thought at the time. Maybe he wouldn't have. Maybe he, exactly what he did is what he wanted to do. But I do believe this firmly. The only reason it happened is because it was me. I think if anybody else had done the exact same thing I had done that day, had never been out there before, just went and done, exact same thing I did, I don't think anything would happen. I think because it was me, because they knew me, they knew my notions, my tendencies, and been watching me for seven years. They watched me probably kill every deer I'd taken out of there. Which is the only thing I ever took out of there was so deer. You, you twisted them off. 
And then finally I did something that they didn't like. Something else they didn't like. They tolerated me quite a bit. <laughs> uh, DSMO, we'll make this the last one. Carrie, did the big no come when, when he say you reach for the gun or just think you, oh no. I think it hit me about the time I got my hand on the grip. I say it was all so quick. You know, it, the way I tell it, I know it seems longer, but he literally just come up there doing his thing. And I immediately, you know, get my hand down. And that's when he went ballistic, not ballistic, but he was more visibly upset that I was making a motion toward that, that handle. And when he, oh, you know, toward me, like, oh, you better not, you know, it's just the impression I got. It makes sense. He knew what that was, but been watching it was all years. black. The whole thing was, was black. The whole gun was synthetic and it was black shotguns, Benelli, three and a half inch, 12 gauge automatic. Look them up. All synthetic. And they are black. It was brand new. I paid like 600 bucks for it or more. No, those, those are nice. No, it was like, no, it was like 1100 bucks what I paid for it. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, the pump, I think, was like five or 600 The automatic was like, yeah. like I, I, I have the pump, but it's cam mode. Well, I had a goose gun barrel on it, oh. a 30-inch barrel. It was super long. But they weren't. that wasn't anything they had ever seen. Right. The first time I'd ever had it out there was that day. Mm. And I'd always have my rifle. When I hunted, I went in there plenty of times with no gun, nothing, just my pocket knife. But during hunting season, it was the... Wood grain, nickel, Ruger, M77, uh, 7 millimeter Magnum, Mark well, three. Put a hole in something. Oh, yeah. It's a lot Five of guns. Oh, that is a it lot of definitely... guns. But y'all have big deer in Mississippi versus, you know, that's not a Texas gun. <laughs> no, it's not really a good deer gun. It's but too big. I mean, the deer in Mississippi are so much bigger than texas deer the bodies oh yeah that's that's Not what i mean rats. by that yeah that's what i mean by that the bodies are so much bigger you know yeah. anyway, that's, Illinois, that's another Ohio, subject they're really big uh are we going to get to see mark's thermal footage from pam and paul's yes you are i've actually seen some stills of that and uh looks like some hominoid heads sticking up there mm. looking what it looks like anyway all right we done almost well here's iron dogger oh yeah hello Carrie, iron. knowing all you know would you have done anything different during after your encounter you know there are a lot of things i think i could have done at the time uh that i probably wouldn't be sitting here now mm. but yeah i would i would have faced it a lot sooner i just turned completely away from it i had made myself into this person uh intentionally so it wasn't hard to make myself out to get myself out of that and and just become someone that was a lot more outgoing a lot nicer to people i went out of my way to be nice to people if i saw someone with a sign on the side of the road i'm pulling over and giving them 20 bucks you know that changed me to that degree when i was a lot more family functions i went to um I mean, it was pretty much the the beginning of the end of my marriage at the time. You know, I become some. I wasn't. I wasn't who she married. It was this new guy that was a lot different. So yeah, I would have. I would have done that differently. I definitely would have faced it and uh, paid a lot more attention, cared a lot more about the people that run into them because that, that's what we do now we don't care about sasquatch i don't care anything about them you know we talk about the things they do and their abilities and and you know what they look like and sizes and how they do some of the things they could do possibly but i don't really care about any of those things i don't care if i ever found out any of it but i do care about the people that run into them because i know what can happen to you if you let it it's all on you, all of it. it, to get, you can feel sorry for yourself like I did and pity and pout. 
no one else is going to do it for me, so I have to do it, right? Or you can buck up and face it and scream it to the world. Tell them all. Because it's true. This is, this is actuality. I know it doesn't make any sense. It's not supposed to make sense. We have been indoctrinated for it not to make any sense. We're working on getting rid of all that. All right, we'll do this one. What's the closest y'all have ever gotten toward the, as close as I've ever been that I know of? 20 feet. I got the picture of a little gray face. I got it right here. The very first day I was out there freaking out. You could not have drove a nail up my butt. And the second day is when we heard the guy jump in the water on us. And there's actually a video Mark has of me in 2016, right after it happened, me telling what happened. And I was jumpy. That's the and, closest you got? And thinner. I weigh like 230. <laughs> I yeah, I weigh like 250 now. I got this picture. Where in the heck is it? I just saw it. I'm going to show y'all this little gray face guy that you've seen before. I'll tell, I'll tell this one then. Uh, I think it was the second day of 168 when the dog did the stranger danger with the ears mm -hmm. when Chad's dog. And then I got that military night vision and 25, 20 yards away. So the one eye flashing kind of in rhythmic with the, uh, Fireflies, they were around there that night. There oh, he is. Wow. Little gray face troll. Yep. In this video, I just watched the clip. He just fades back real slow. And as soon as you can't see him anymore, we get up and leave. <clears throat> anyway, you were saying? No, I was just right saying there. that that was the, you know, the, the one eye was flashing. And I was like, you know, looking at it through that, you know, it's green, that night vision. And so I would see was the brightness. And then when all of a sudden both eyes have both opened. And then it was like, no, nah, I can't. And, you know, and then I saw it turn its head. And all I saw with that, with that night vision was just the, the skin. You know, so I just saw that part of the skin. But when it turned its head, I caught more of the, and, and I, 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 I mean, you know. And I, how I, far away? That was right yards. there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was right by it was right in the corner. And the next day, you remember we saw everything was trampled down, and that's where yep. the footprint was found. Mm -hmm. And it, it still took me two or three months really thinking about it and analyzing it every day, numerous times. It's a day, hard. Trying it's to hard figure just... out. No, it couldn't be. It couldn't be. And then I saw a picture. I think that Mark posted or whatever when, with the face, the kind of grayish face, and, and you could just see the skin of the face. And I was like, bam, that was it. That was it. It's hard to, to suspend disbelief. Even when you're out there and you know they're around, it's still, you still want to say, because uh, it's just that ambiguous. They just don't give you very much unless they want to. That's the only way you're going to get them. Mark just got one. He sent sent it to me, and you, this guy's standing between two trees, and he's very wide. You see his shoulders out either side, and this he's got a bush in front of his mouth, but you still see this and this facial symmetry, apex, wide shoulders. Oh, shit. not the bushes. Sorry. That's thirty dollars. It's not the bushes. <clears throat> It's not the bushes, and uh, I'm probably going to uh, – he just sent it to me, but since I'm still working on the film, I'm probably going to put it in the film Shit. <clears throat> so you guys can uh, can have a look at it. But I'm pretty sure it's on his Patreon oh, right now. <clears throat> well, hey, look, we've gone almost two hours, Brad. This is a record for us. Are you there? You don't have crap. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, right. you didn't hit mute, so we can still. I, I'm sorry. I, my foot started cramping, and and then yeah, oops, oh, I hit stop the camera. 
Holler at me, Chris. Sorry. I can describe I can describe this thing's face 100 percent See it all the time. But when I see it, it's not 80 feet away. It's right here. I close my eyes and I see and I, it's right there. So I owe a hundred dollars all the time. <laughs> oh, thank you, Barbie. Super sticker. Appreciate thank that. Thank you. Oh, you guys. All right. <clears throat> Two hours, man. Wow. Yeah. Record for us, I think. Well, they, just for just you and I. It's shooting just, the breeze. Just a straight, yeah. On a, uh, on a, just a, a scatter whim, shooting. A wind show. And I hate doing this. I hate not having anything prepared, even though we did the Moose Lad Harry story. I'm still not, I don't like coming on here and just. We don't scatter. We don't, we don't do this hardly at all, though, where we just. No. It just flows. Well, we have to rely on uh, the chat to give us <laughs> a subject and uh, and questions. But, hey, look, we appreciate everybody showing up here tonight. Over 400 in live. That's awesome, as always. Can't believe anybody sits and listens to us, period. This just blows me away. So thank you all very Thanks, much everybody. for everything. Uh, Y'all, you got me to work today. I didn't have to call the credit card people, and that was awesome. So yeah, we know we know we're loved. You guys definitely take care of us, and we appreciate you very much, Brad Bailey. It was good seeing you today. It was really good to see you. I missed you. <clears throat> I missed seeing you. The intensity. Well, hopefully, we'll get to make a weekend trip up to Pam and Paul's here pretty soon. Oh please! Before before one sixty eight in December. I um, hope so so bad. Hopefully, we'll get to go up there, but we'll we'll holler at you, Pam and Paul, pretty soon, Brad. Good show. Thanks, everybody. Hey, check out check out the film. 138 people have watched it. 138. <laughs> Not counting the members. There was 440 members, which is every member we had uh, watched it. Let us know what you before think. Y before y'all go doing the math <laughs> on, on how much uh, how much we get from our members. Keep in mind, YouTube takes half. So, <clears throat> thanks again, everybody. Good show, Brad. I don't even know how to end this thing. It's just, let's just end it. Good night. <laughs>